Great. So, are we ready? Okay. Um, so, welcome to the Brookfield Board of Selectmen's meeting for September 21st, 2021. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. So old business, um, just as a, as a point of order, and I missed it with the agenda, um, for the old business, I, I'd like to keep it as a standing item, the status of the different um, Warren article work. Okay, um, I had asked Karen to put that on just once a month because oh, once a things month? don't okay. change that quickly because the things on the warrant are, are large. Okay. And they don't have that kind of turnaround time. So I would every other week be going, there's nothing to report this week. Okay. <laughs> Which is okay. If that's all right. I mean, or we can leave it on as a, as a standing. Yeah. Well, and actually, the only reason why it became the, the only reason why I thought of it was just because I know I had seen the guys doing the cleats. So I yes. Know. Those are finished. Yeah. So. so there's your update for today. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so, um, so first, the, the other old business is uh, approving the job descriptions. So we've got assess, uh, assessing administrative clerk, board of selectmen, municipal clerk slash municipal clerk. Is there? So you have two descriptions that were provided to me. Um, one was the municipal clerk, uh -huh. and the other was the board of selectmen municipal clerk. The I'm, I'm guessing because I was not here when this when this occurred. The municipal clerk would be the other clerks that are available to hire by the boards. So this is a general description. Okay. It turns out the descriptions are identical. Yeah. So I didn't know if you wanted to keep one for all clerks who are municipal that would work for different various boards and departments or because it's a very generic description. Right, and it's and it's and interesting it because yeah, and I think I, I I'm kind of inclined to just say a municipal clerk is a municipal clerk is a municipal clerk, mm -hmm. and if they happen to be doing work for the board of selectmen, oh well. Yes. If they're not, then then it. And what's interesting is our municipal clerk previously was also one of the people that could take funds, but that's something we want to avoid unless we're bonding to people, I would assume. Well, yes, no one, no one should be taking any funds for any reason unless they're bonded. Right. So, um, is there any, is the Board of Selectmen Municipal Clerk actually defined as a discrete position in our uh, bylaws? I don't think so. I don't recall. Yeah. And, and I will tell you that we had... Well, I, that was a loaded question. I kind of need an answer. <laughs> Sorry. I don't it, know was, it was just a municipal clerk. Yeah. And then I don't know how it was changed. I assume when maybe Collins wow. Center came on board, they decided to make the difference. And I think maybe they meant to... Maybe they just it, maybe they were just know. indicating uh, Lois because she works in the Board of Selectmen's office versus the other municipal clerks. Could be. And it was just represented that way when they did it on the Collins Center? It's possible. Yeah, so I'd be inclined to, I don't know, I'm thinking we would adopt just the generic municipal clerk. Could we adopt just the one and then if there was a, a, was it like a call for applications or something like that, like each department could maybe put in special pieces or qualifications? I listen to <laughs> it's okay. You were talking first. Uh, if if we have like the this job description, and then say the board of selectmen needed a clerk for something. Um, well, we have a municipal we have, clerk. Yeah. So yeah. But if if there was a department that needed a, uh, another department, could they add in like a, a clause or other um, qual sorry, required qualifications? Not so, once you'd have to do another job description another job. Yeah. Um, because you you're. I think that what Beth's idea is is just appropriate, that it would just be board. not Board of Selectmen municipal clerk, but a municipal, just municipal clerk is a municipal yeah. clerk. No, I'm, I'm fine with that so, as well. It's just more of a... Yeah, yeah. if they wanted to have question, a more specialized clerk function, then you would need to approve a new job title gotcha. and a new job description. Now, now, that wouldn't stop you, even if this is the job description, that wouldn't 
necessarily stop you when you post for a position to say so, like preferred experience or something like that if, it, if there was something explicitly required for, for what that function gotcha. was that the person was doing. And I, and I think yes. even if it's not expressly stated in the job description, you could at least have some criteria that would be mm -hmm. viewed favorably during the hiring yes, process. You can, yeah, absolutely. You can use that as a, as a, you know, if you've got a scoring mechanism, if you're doing a rubric, you can use that in the rubric as to why you would choose one over the, the other, other, even though it's not necessarily part of the job description. Okay. Cool. It can be put in the advertisement that it's something that you're exactly. looking for, so that you're disclosing that that's exactly like something okay. that's more important. Yeah, I'm that just, particular just thinking if that were a case, like the department would want either additional right, like, qualifications like, like, or anything. Right. That and they'd be able to still put that in mm -hmm. if it was just a generic yeah. municipal clerk description. Right. Okay. So. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with the generic municipal clerk. Okay. All right. So that would give us. Simple. So a municipal clerk, um, health administrative clerk, I, I take it that's for the Board of Health. It is. Um, and they've reviewed this? Yes, I had I had them review that and the health agent. Uh, so what you have is their redlined mm -hmm. version, version of it, and okay. so they would like it accepted with their changes. And I left it redlined so that you could see the changes rather than send you two to compare side by side. Okay, I do have a question regarding, so are they saying that the treasurer is the only one that will maintain the personal attendance and time off records? For, which are we looking The at? health administrative clerk? Yeah. That's the treasurer's job. Okay. Well, that's what I'm just, yeah. uh, that's what I'm saying yeah. is I, I'm, I'm assuming that's because it falls under the treasurer. Yeah, and the, and the administrative clerk isn't going to be submitting payroll for the Board of Health. Or does it say they are? They're responsible for preparing expense vouchers and payroll. Okay. Yeah. It does say that they'll do expense vouchers, payroll on a biweekly basis to be turned over to the accountant. Yeah. So including personnel attendance and time off records, aren't the Board of Health, they don't have hours. No, they but the transfer station does. And the Board of Health runs the transfer station okay. fundamentally. All right. So unless we're taking the stance that the transfer station employees work for the Board of Selectmen and not the Board of Health, which historically that hasn't been the case. Okay, so I think what we need to do is just clarify that that they are not responsible for keeping records of that, but they have to, it, it has to be submitted with payroll because the rule is if you're taking a vacation day, you haven't requested a vacation day, your superior has not signed off on a vacation day, you're not getting paid for that vacation, vacation day, day if you take it off. Right. So, um, it, so for instance, I give my payroll to Karen, Karen then has Lois process it. It's not Lois's job to keep track of what my vacation time used is. That's on my documents that I submit. Right. So. I think that's where this is. It just needs to be spelled out a little okay. better. So do we want to hold this one until yes. we clarify that yes, language? I think that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Um, Board of Health agent. I don't see anything indicative of the red lines on that. So are we all in agreement mm -hmm. on that one? And then we have alignment with the assessor, with the yes, chief assessor. Yes, Al went through this, so did Patty. Um, and this is, this is the, uh, it's actually, I think there was only one thing added to this. And okay. I can't off the top of my head remember what it was, but it, it had to do, oh, I remember what it was. They are, they assist in preparing the annual person property property formal list and maintaining the chapter lands. Okay. Which wasn't on there before, but that's something, a function that she did, so I added it. Okay, that's fine. I was about to say, I thought it was chapter lands was one of the mm -hmm. edits, so. I don't, okay. know, I don't know if these will be the final ones, but there is a spelling mistake on them. Oh, on which one? On the, 
uh, administrative clerk, the assessing administrative clerk. Where? It says under, case, under education, uh, mm -hmm. it says be required to comple instead of complete. <laughs> Good catch. All right. I mean, okay. I knew, I read it as complete three times All right. before. So <laughs> we'll, we'll edit that and then you can accept it. You will accept the, it with the, the one edit. edit. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for catching that. Yes. Yeah. No, like I said, I read it three times as complete and then yeah. it, it, it's not complete. Wait a second. Sometimes it's not complete. your eyeballs say, see what you want them to see. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So uh, can I get a motion to uh, uh, accept the uh, assessing administrative clerk, municipal clerk, and board of health agents job descriptions? Yep. I'll make a motion to accept the job descriptions. Uh, as read and noted um, with the amendment for the, uh, the with alteration. the one edit for the yep. with the one edit for the I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So do we have? Uh, that's it for old business. Do we have Ms. Zitter? Is she on? Is she tried to? No, I've been checking. No, she is not. On. Okay, so we'll skip over that and we'll mm -hmm. come back to it. Or we can start the discussion and come back to it if she doesn't join. How about that? Since you're here. I don't want to keep I you forever. Yeah. She wouldn't show up. The, oh, okay. So. Yeah, she's not Do you have the waiting room? She, she, the waiting room. Yeah. Well, you can also okay. can disable the waiting room. Yeah. You go to participants and. Uh, where is it? Yeah. If you go into the three dots on, under participants, you see the three dots down at the bottom corner. No. Uh, here. My eyes haven't improved enough to see that small on the screen that far away. Oh, no. yeah. <laughs> just unclick and name the Oh, okay, so she'll automatically be in the middle. Yeah, and you know, as much as I gave the ding, let's uh, lay a sound and join so that we'll hear when she comes in. And you can rewind that. You. That'd be great. Oh, maybe go this way. There we go. There we go. So, um, so let's, let's talk a little bit. I know that like the quote unquote speeding on Lake Road, we've had that, that concern come up even with like plows and the like. Um, so, this is that when I got the email from Karen, this is actually the first time I've gotten a complaint myself. Okay, perfect timing. On Lake Road um, in a while. Okay. Um, and I, I was, um, from Kelly's mail, I was trying to figure out where it was. It seemed like she's had an issue with the speed going down, where it's going across continuing on to Lake Road into East Brookfield. That, yes. Um, we probably haven't been doing very many radar patrols on that section of the road because we kind of assume that the closing of the bridge has at least Lower traffic. corrected that problem because anyone coming down that road is slowing down to take a right onto either Allen Road or right. left onto Lake Road to go back up towards Oak Home or something. Okay. So it's admittedly been off our radar. We can certainly put it back on our radar. Yeah. Um, now, um, as far as what the speed limit is, technically, according to, to you know, 9017, that road would be a, going down, or going across, would be a 40 mile an hour zone. Now, we could probably get some sort of special regulation as far as the beach park goes. I'd have to look more into that, maybe get that to be a 25 or a 30 or something like that, due to the, the boat trailers going in and out across the road. Um, during the summertime, you have kids going back and forth to the beach, families going back and forth to the beach. But that's something, it's not, when me and Ryan talked last week when we first found out about it, we were gonna look for, uh, I believe Cindy has a certified list of all the speed limits on all the streets in the town that, that Mass Highway has certified. Okay. And we can see what they have that portion of the road listed as, if there's anything different than we think it is. Okay. So. Yeah, and, and it sounds like, it sounds like it might be worth doing a little enforcement down there so that people... Yeah, but I, I totally admit that. I just figured that the problem is correct because nobody's going straight through it. When they do, they have to go around half the lane that's all barreled off. So I think I just assume nobody was really going too fast through that. Right. They only have probably 400 yards before they have to stop, you know, once they pass those barrels. Right. You know, so... Yeah, you would think it wouldn't... That's on me. You know, I just assumed. So but we can certainly correct that. Yeah. Well, and and the and the challenge is right is that like you said, it it changes behavior while it's there. It's just like the trailers. Right. Um, so I mean, we will certainly get a hold of our, our, our district, you know, Mass Highway, was it District Three or Four, or whatever, and quarters out three, and see if they have any special regulation and what it would take, you know, what sort of 
information they would need to require, you know, like the summertime beach, you know, the, the boating and everything like that, to get that at least that section probably from Allen Road to the line, to the East Brookfield line, to be maybe 25 or, or, or something like that. Right, but actually that still wouldn't hit the space that they're talking about, right? Because it'd be for well, right down. talking about it all collectively, all the way down the road, all, you know, from Rice Corner down. That, you know, I, I don't believe we could change. Yeah, you know? and that's a 40. That, not even know. getting closer to the intersection, you can't kick it down. I mean, I can look to see what next highway suggests, okay. but I, I'm not familiar with what the process is. Yeah, to do so this. you know, like we kind of briefly talked about at the last meeting, or I think it was when yeah. mm -hmm. Roland was talking about. Here, yeah, you know, you have to do a, a study and you have to you count the traffic and you can see how how many cars go by and how safe, with, you know, what the average speed is that they can safely go by without any. So, you know, right. technically sometimes if somebody wanted to get something lower, they can actually turn out sometimes a little higher than they wanted because their, their cars are able to, to go through it at a, you know, at a speed that's safer. You know. Yeah. Remind me to forward his last communication. I don't know if we shared it with Ryan where he was recommending uh, seeing if we could at least try to redirect the traffic, the commercial traffic off of Maple Street and onto Prouty because okay. that, that would allow them to make the right-hand turn without it being the killer right-hand turn, staying on 148. But I don't know. I don't know that it's... Know that I agree with that as a safety. Really? You think it's unsafe? Yeah, I mean, it's such a sharper corner. That's it, yeah. If you're having larger vehicles, it, it's, it's much easier. The vast majority of the vehicles are, are, are going to be coming westbound on Route 9, and it's easy for them to go down rather yeah, than... Well, and that's exactly you know, how it happens, right? We had a street before I would about put up those flashing stop signs on Crowley Road of, of mm -hmm. you know, several accidents. Oh really? People just going right across. The oh, because there's because there's a lot of blind. Yeah, you can't really see. You just really I, can't I see. I don't have an explanation for it. It makes sense, but they never saw the other stop sign until the highway department got those mm -hmm. stop Flashing. signs. It, it, it was hard to, just like your eyes weren't looking for something there. Right. You were just looking and straight ahead. Right across. So we had a, a, a you know a, a triaxle dump truck for the bullet there because the car went out in front of it. So okay. I wouldn't recommend making the turn there. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so that's legit. So I'll just include that in the response that you guys were consulted in. Yeah. And it's from a safety perspective, not a good idea. Yeah, so. because it's just, it's a fun, it's a 90 degree corner. It's hot for that, the that whole, that whole, the whole engineering of the, all those, the intersection of those roads, you can tell it was when it was horse carts. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's a there's a poem about that. I, I need to remember that one. So, because it's, it's where the first cat first cow meandered through. That's why our road goes that direction in New England. So. All right. Um, okay, so we don't have Ms. Zitter yet. I mean, I, if she so so we can look into it. Reach out to her and call, and, and I, I can either call her or I can stop by and see what her her, her main focus of the issue is. But. I would. Did, do we have her phone number? Because we could start with. I think a phone I'll, call is less scary see, than the chief of police knocking on your door. <laughs> Let's not do that. <laughs> but he's so friendly looking. He is. He, he is officer friendly, but still. Let's start with a phone yeah. call, and if she wants to talk to him face to face, she can invite him over. So. <laughs> so. No, that's legit. No, that's legitimate. I mean, we can we can do what we can do in accordance with what, you know, you know, because the state doesn't want towns going wild and like setting up a speed trap on every nook and. Well, I remember before the bridge was closed, we were down in that area because they do pick up speed coming down the hill straight across, you know, the yeah. pond. Yeah. And, and we yeah, did that pretty regularly, but again, my mistake. I assumed it was kind of self-corrected while the bridge was out. But. Yeah. I think what happened is that I think well you would think it would be but I think what's fundamentally happening if, if I was going to guess is that's one of the alternate routes down in Mr. Bridge and instead of going straight down kind of that that whole lake road rice corner road piece they're just bailing off on the rice corner road and taking that piece down in Mr. Bridge so I could totally you should be back overnight I saw the last deal mm -hmm. down there the other week he said I asked him for a week or two and he said no probably a month or two yeah Safer than you know, so it should be over within you know, the next two months. Yeah, they, got, they, they wanted to be paved, you know, I think, about the area they dug up. But, you know, it looks much better than it had in a while. 
Yeah. So that's why I assume when we get to it, he, he, gave, he gave me a time frame of a month or two. Okay. So, so. then you'll start, you'll be you'll be up that speed again. So, especially yeah. the first day, that's the day it's, yeah. So, yeah, it's definitely why that was. Yeah. Fresh pavement always seems to be an invitation yeah. to go fast. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why. Yeah, it's some sort of subconscious <laughs> thing. I, it's, I don't know. I, it's I flat honestly and don't know. Why. Than we it's live in the land yeah. of pop yeah. 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 You don't have, you don't have, you don't have the, na the na natural speed bumps of, uh, of potholes. True. Well, maybe because I have a truck too, and I, they just don't naturally, like, I don't feel the need for speed in a pickup truck. Yeah. There is that. <laughs> so, okay. So you'll take a look at it from both ends, and then we'll give her a call yeah. back. Yeah, I, I don't know. Would the state still have it on file? I would assume so, but if we already have it here, we don't have it. Ask them. But I'm sure they do, because I think that's exactly where she got it from, you know? Yeah. Okay. If she had it before, she had it. I'm sure she probably does. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we good there? Can we end You guys are. Is that agenda? Uh, let's put it on the next okay. agenda. So, did you get it as like correspondence or? Uh, people talking to me. Okay, yeah. Let's, about four let's, or five we'll, people come up to me. Yeah, we'll put that on the next it agenda. It just reminded me there. Okay. So. It's another um, traffic thing, but. Okay. So let's move on to appointments. We have. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. We'll <laughs> <laughs> it goes with the job, right? It does. So. All right, so we've got uh, uh, a couple of appointments. We've got um, Sean Adams being appointed as our new full-time firefighter and paramedic uh, for term ending June 30th, 2022. Uh, and then we have uh, Kate Ulibarri uh, being appointed as a member of the Cultural Council, uh, also ending on June 30th, 2022. Can I get a motion to uh, do those two appointments? I make a motion to accept those two appointments. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. And your signature, sir. Yep. All right. So we've got a discharge of lien on real estate. You're all set. You, excuse me. Yeah. Ryan, did you get the payroll um, for your new assistant? The payroll? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah, that's it. Okay. 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 All right. Good enough. Thank you. Great. <laughs> Thanks, gentlemen. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Um, so what we've got here is a Massachusetts discharge of lien on real estate. So the city town of Brookfield party to an agreement and loan of $17,235 from the FY18 Brookfield Community Assistance Program. Uh, to the owners of 4 Hyde Street, Brookfield, Mass., as evidenced by the assignment of proceeds with the Worcester County Registry of Deeds at Book 65966, page 131, and acknowledge the satisfaction of the same. So it looks like um, this is for... Discharge using the attached form. So, fundamentally, what in in English? How do we explain this? In English, um, a resident received a grant. Yep. For rehabbing their home. Yep. They've met all the requirements. requirements to satisfy that, and the lien is now being removed. That's Congratulations right. on them for Yay. Outstanding. not having the lien anymore. So that's outstanding. So um, can I get a motion to sign the discharge of lien? I'll make a motion to sign the discharge of lien. All right. Uh, I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye.
going to need to get notarized, but Karen can take care of that. Mm -hmm. got notches inside. All right, so we're going to move on to, looks like we've got a seasonal population ABCC estimate form, which apparently we didn't bother to put our actual city and town name on. So, um, can I get a motion to, do we need, is this one where we need all, at least the two yeah. of us to sign it? You okay. need, well, you need a majority, yes. Okay. All right. So, uh, can I get a motion to uh, approve the seasonal population increase estimate form to our current census, which is 3439? I'll make a motion of that. Second it. All in favor? Aye. special use permit or we've got one special use permit or two okay so we've got the state has actually allowed an increase from four to seven vehicles for special seven to ten or seven to ten I'm sorry I don't know where I was going um, increase from seven to ten vehicles and two of the previously approved permits are asking for approval for um, for 10 vehicles instead. And that's the uh, Sunday, October 17th permit for Go Fish Dan LLC, and then the 31st of October also Go Fish Dan LLC. Um, and that's for South Pond. Did you say the 31st of October? Yes. Okay. Nothing, my notes are different, that's all. But you have the form. I have the form, form in front right. of me. It says Sunday, October 31st. Okay. <laughs> the form so can I get a motion to approve those? I'll make a motion to approve the uh, permits. Okay, second that. All in favor? Aye. And do you need any type of signature indication on no, this? No, I just understand them tomorrow. Okay, great. Uh, looks like we have a new special use permit. We've got it for uh, the 9th of October, Quaybog for Avid Anglers. And then uh, that's it. So can I get a motion to uh, approve that permit? I'll make a motion to approve the permit. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, let's set some meeting dates. Mm -hmm. So before you choose your meeting dates, okay. we, we bumped the meetings back 15 minutes instead of 6.30. And, and I've noticed that it seems to be a struggle. So if you want to move it back to 6.30, now is the time to do that. Well, I understand that. It's, it's going to be a struggle if it's 6.30, so it doesn't really matter. Okay. As long as it's... So I know Adam is in a new uh, does it, position. Does it, does it, and it'll, it'll get better as winter comes. Okay. I just... So. If you want to bump it back to 6.30, no, no, then... 6.15. Now it, now would be it's, the time. it's settled in. I was able to get here. Okay. okay. If you're okay, I'm okay. Yep. Yeah, so after uh, Kelly and I talked today about it... I, Figured it out. You figured so it out. Yeah. Okay. All right. Because I'm, 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 I, I, I steadfastly refused six o'clock because I knew there was a high likelihood I wouldn't make it. Yeah, I would not make it six o'clock. Yeah. yeah. I so, can yeah. get here for six, but before six, four to six o'clock. Oh, yeah. You but can't get there. there. Oh dear. Okay. Hello. Visitor. I am. I am so. So so sorry. I went to check whether the meeting was seven or seven thirty, and I saw that it was six fifteen. And I know that you had asked the police chief to come specially. I'm so sorry to be late. So I, I, I'm afraid to admit that we did actually hold the discussion without you. And what the chief did state, just so you're aware. Um, is one they had um, eased up a little bit on enforcement in that area because with the bridge um, construction they had figured that it would kind of naturally slow the traffic down some and apparently based on your report that's not necessarily the case um, so 
and if you want to go ahead and speak and talk about what you're observing, that, that yeah, would be great. Yeah, I really apologize. Um, actually, at 615, I was talking to one of my neighbors um, on the corner of, of uh, Rice Corner Road and Allen Road. Um, I don't know if you know the Graves family, Camille and Matt Graves, said that their um, dog had been hit last spring, hit and killed mm. by um, somebody who didn't slow down going down that Rice Corner Road. It's very, it's very hard actually to slow down. I have to keep putting my foot in the brake and reminding myself because it's very easy to get up to 15 miles an hour without realizing it. Um, and then Gloria next door, um, my neighbor Gloria Ferronio said that um, she remembered when the sign was taken down and she had thought, and I think Karen said something similar to this, that um, the town had to apply for the state to have a lower um, speeding limit or something like that, and that the sign was taken down because the state, you know, was, the state said that it was supposed to be different. I don't know. But Gloria said that, um, that even with the bridge out, her experience was the same as ours, the people, she said especially um, people who work for the bridge sometimes will zoom out at 50 miles an hour, you know, mm. past our house and just to jump out of the room. And that's the experience we've had with our, with our dog as well. Um, but even, I mean, we're wearing, It'll be worse when the bridge opens, but even with the bridge out, but there's somebody with a Cooper and somebody with a motorcycle who I think works at the bridge to just, they just totally zoom out at the end of the day very quickly. But many other people who come down Rice Corner very, very quickly, whether they're turning onto Allen or whether they're turning onto Lake. So did, did, the, uh, did the police chief say that he had any power to, to do anything so, about so, it? So the things that he offered, um, he offered a few things. Uh, the first was that he was going to talk to his officers and they were going to um, basically pick back up on the enforcement in that area because they had not expected it to be an issue, so they had been concentrating on some other areas in town. Because um, historically it is one of the areas that they've kind of kept watch over because it is kind of a thoroughfare kind of getting down into the East Brookfield Sturbridge area. So that was the first thing. He said he would reach out to you by phone because I believe we have your phone number as well. And, and if you had, in that way he could get your feedback directly regarding what you're seeing. Uh, and he even offered to come down and speak with you directly if you wanted to show him, you know, this, the areas that you're most concerned with. Uh, yeah. Um, the other piece is that they're going to try to find uh, the information that they have from a study with the state like six, seven years ago that set what the speed limits are supposed to be for the different pieces of um, different roads in town, uh, inclusive of that space. Uh, he's pretty sure right now the limit is 40 miles an hour, and even though it's not currently posted, I, I think they were going to confirm that and then potentially work with the highway department to see what we need to do to, to post what it is in that space. So, so 40 miles an hour all the way up to the beach? Um, yes, although there may be a way to apply for a lower speed in the area right approaching to the beach. So, and, and that yeah, That might be good because so many people, especially now with a new parking lot that's paved across the street, um, I know that's, that's supposed to be for boats. You know, but when people walk back, especially at dusk, people usually walk across to that lot to get their car and then they back it up to the, uh, to the ramp and if people are speeding, you know, it's easy for them to miss people at dusk. Right, absolutely. So they said because of the beach, they can at least explore what they would need to do to, to apply for that to be lower if it is indeed still 40 miles an hour in that oh, space. Well, thank you so much. Again, I, I apologize for mixing up the time and I appreciate your understanding and attention to this. Yeah. Well, thanks for thanks for speaking with us about it. Appreciate mm -hmm. you at least informing us that that's what was going on because we can't be everywhere at once. Yep. So. Oh, of course. Thank you. If there's any other way I can help, let me know. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. And I appreciate everything that you're doing. Do you want to So, so did, would you prefer that the chief call you, or would you prefer that he swing by and and uh, talk? Uh, either one is fine. Whatever is best for him. Okay. We'll let him know. Okay, thank you so much. Thanks. Have a good evening. Bye-bye. Bye. So. One thing, just because we're back on the topic that might be of use to talk to the, the chief um, when he's going to talk to the state or anything like that, is any kind of uh, crosswalk or sidewalk stuff. Oh, that's true. If we're going from the beach to the parking lot. Well, that'd be, more the, that'd be more the highway super. Okay. 
So if they put a crosswalk in, it, you know, that might give them some space to also. Yeah, that might be a point of oh, crosswalk hit the right. break a little yeah, bit. Yeah, and might be a selling point to the state that we're putting mm -hmm. a crosswalk in, and we need to right for the safety of the residents. Yep. Yeah. Beachgoers, beachgoers, and the like. Mm -hmm. People using the boat ramp. Yes. So, okay. So yeah, so we'll probably want to give them the follow-up information. Okay. But. Great. Are we good there? I think so. Back to schedule topic. Yep. Okay. Um, so I think we stay on six fifteen. It is a struggle, but okay. we just got to be good yeah. at the comms in that, advance. That works fine for me. Just wanted to make sure that you guys weren't. It wasn't too much to get here. That's right. All. So. Right. So long as so long as no one wants to make fun of, of me for walking in with my sandwich, we're all good. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, let's see here. Um, the highlighted dates we have here: October fifth, the nineteenth; November second, sixteenth, thirtieth; fourteenth and twenty eighth for December. Does that work for you? Do you know how that fits with regards to your potential conflicts? November second, uh, I think, is a conflict, right, Adam? But it's just my birthday. Oh, okay. Ah, <laughs> birthday too. Um, so I don't know if it's really a conflict. It was on your list on your email. Yeah. Well, so your your thirtieth of November and your twenty mm eighth -hmm. of December. Mm -hmm. yep. We have. The 25th is Christmas in December, so that Monday we're going to be closed. So mm -hmm. Ooh, that's yes. going to be kind of a, That'd and we're closed the Thursday before. So it's, it's, there's not going to be a lot of follow up once the agenda is posted to yep. get the data that you may need. Just keep that in mind. Yeah. And, and the same with the 30th because the 25th is how is Thanksgiving. So that I'm not sure how, how do you do it here? Is it the day before? Or the, the day, day after day of this one falls on a work day, so I would assume this one's going to be the day of. So that one should not be an issue. We'll just need to post the agenda. Yeah, early. Yeah. Close Friday, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll have to post the agenda early, but okay, it should be. Yeah, so that should be a non a non issue. But the the twenty eighth might be a little crunchy mm -hmm. because of Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Um, Let's leave it on the calendar for now mm. because there's sometimes like things just like relatively minor but they have to be done right before the end of the year. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what it was last year but we were really glad we left it on the calendar because we had like one issue we needed to take yeah, care of and always, it was a wicked we short meeting. We can always cancel it if there's nothing. Yeah. So. yeah. What's the policy for um, snow? Will we move to uh, I don't know what a digital Bill's format? No policy is. If the if I mean, if the town hall is closed because of snowstorm. Yeah, we typically just cancel those meetings, and if there's something that's like critical, then we would just post it for an off cycle meeting. Okay. You know, if there's something like super critical. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Um, so I. I'm, is there a forty eight hour cancel like? Do we have to give 48 hours notice for you cancellation? You can cancel it two seconds before it happens. Okay. The, the, it's just the agenda changing is the 48. Yes, because the purpose behind that is that so that the residents have enough time to know whether or not it's something they want to come. Yeah, I was just thinking in, the, so. with the reverse for cancellation, if they were planning yeah. to come and then we canceled it you know, yeah. 20 minutes before and they may be already on their way. Yeah. But, but it could cancel for any reason. I mean, you could just sure. not have a quorum and then you have to cancel. I mean, it happens. Right. So okay. it happens. Yeah. You know? I almost had to. I almost had to make an emergency trip to the vet today. If that had oh. happened, then we wouldn't have had a meeting because we don't have two. <laughs> do you want to vote on those? Yeah. So, uh, do we want to go ahead and? Um, can I get a motion for the select the highlighted dates? Yep. I will make a motion to select the highlighted dates, uh, which will take us through the end of the year. Okay. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So we've got uh, minutes. In the highway, well, actually, we've got the highway department report. Yeah. Let's 
see here. And it looks like uh, first week in August, um, largely in, um, largely pothole work, um, some equipment loaning to East Brookfield, as well as some sign installation. Uh, second week they did uh, um, some trash runs, uh, patched edge, cut edges and spread millings on Old Lake Road. Um, let's see here, Lewis Field mowing, uh, working on the uh, CDBG grant application, uh, review of the Pine Lane flooding issues as well as the concrete pipe on uh, Quaybog Street, reviewing what that needs to be. Um, some additional sign installation. Let's see here. Some regrading on Old Weber Road. Let's see, and dealing with a tree that came down on Long Hill Road. We've got a similar level of detail for anybody that, that has interest in what the highway's been up to mm -hmm. uh, throughout the month of August. So do you want to go ahead and accept the uh, uh, report from the Highway Committee? I'll make a motion to accept the report from the Highway Committee. Or Highway Department, excuse okay. me. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. All right. So we've got some sets of Board of Selectmen minutes. Do you have yeah. a chance to review them? Catching up. I did send them ahead of time, so hopefully yep. you had a chance to look. I got a chance to look at two of the three. Okay. So. so. Okay. So, did you need to review the third one? No, the one that I didn't review was the one that um, I was here for. Oh, okay, great. So, I went through the ones that I missed or had to bow out early. I read those yeah, first. Yeah, right. Okay, great. So... Uh, <coughs> I'll make a motion to uh, accept or approve the selectman's minutes as uh, filed. Okay, so and that's for which dates? June 22nd? Uh, June 22nd, no, uh, September 3rd, and September 8th. Okay, I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Did come in sideways? Okay. Okay, and it looks like we have no correspondence to speak of. Yes. Oh, let me get to the announcements. Yeah. We didn't do the uh, initial announcements, so, um, and we don't have Linda here to do a report on the warrant signed. So. No, but you can you Read can off. approve them and sign them. Okay. So that you know that it's done, okay. but it's not going to be processed until next week anyway. So. Okay. It, it's your call if you want to do that. All right. So uh, announcements. We've got the Brookfield Water Department received recognition from Mass DEP in its 2021 Public Water System Award Program for maintaining full compliance for the 2020 calendar year. This includes staffing, water quality, sampling, reporting, and all other aspects of operating a public water supply. So, um, congratulations to Dennis and the system well operators. Yeah. Well, job well done. So. Um, keeping all the ducks in a row on that so um, so can I get a motion to approve the expense warrant for um, 92121 for 150,000 12750 payroll warrant for 180 08198 and then a withholding warrant for uh, 922 for uh, 60,000 583 I'll make a motion to uh, approve the expense warrant payroll warrant and withholding warrant I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And then just the last announcement. We have openings are available on the following committees, and I have not done the recruiting outreach that I had planned on. It's been a week or two. Uh, and that's uh, three positions for advisory committee, uh, five positions for bylaw committee, capital improvement planning committee. We have four slots open. Brookfield Commission of Disability, we've got five positions. Local Public Access Committee, five positions. CDBG Advisory Committee, grant related, one person. Uh, personnel Board, two people. Zoning Board of Appeals, alternate members, three. And then town is also seeking an ADA coordinator. How many of those, um, 
I guess out of those numbers are required to meet a quorum? I depends on which one. Um, I don't know what the off the top of my head how many members should be on each okay. each committee. I know the advisory committee has a quorum. quorum. Yep. Um, so that what's the bylaw committee does not exist for all funding. Yeah, purposes. yeah, that's it. yeah. The capital improvement planning committee. I don't believe that one has a quorum. No. The Brookfield Commission on Disability doesn't have a single member, mm -hmm. so that doesn't have a quorum. Uh, local access committee. I don't believe that's a quorum either. No, I believe we have two, two. two members, and so. Yeah, it's basically defunct if that's the case. Mm -hmm. um, okay. CDBG Advisory Committee. They have a quorum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Personnel board. They have three. If they, they get do. all three of them, they, they, they can Yeah, meet. so they have to have. So it's a five member board? Yeah. So they have a quorum, but. Yes. So you can't, they can't have a single <laughs> member missing at any time until they have someone else on the board. The ADA coordinator, the legalities around that, the, the, is that the one where the where the person holding it has to be either disabled or have a family member that's disabled? I believe it's an immediate family member as well, not like an extended family member, but yeah. That was okay. for the, um, for the disability good commission, commission on Disability. Yeah. Was it had to be immediate, the individual or an immediate member of the family? family. So okay. I, I, I'm not sure, but I think that the ADA coordinator so also has to meet that same criteria. Okay. Hmm. Wonder if it would be. Yeah. yeah. Have a discussion for tonight. Yeah. Okay. So that's going to still be a struggle for us, in spite of us staying under thirty five hundred and still allowing people to wear multiple hats. Yes. Um, so Karen sent off a hopefully a public interest article to the paper discussing how small towns need mm -hmm. volunteerism and listed all of these for Was that in the last Brookfield. paper? At least one, at least Stonebridge Press said that they would publish something. I think, yeah. Did they? I, I think, okay. I believe I saw it in there. Oh, about all right, good. Communities okay. looking for, any interest, com yeah, communities so, looking yeah. for help. I thought that was great that she did that for a Thank nice you. public outreach. Yeah. So, um, I think that's it. That's it for our agenda. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It is, it is. I will make a motion to close the meeting at 7.04 p.m. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.